One of the most common improvements we can make to our slideshow is to apply a very fine edge line around the outer edge of each image in our slideshow. Now that line can be a very thin line in white, it can be a slightly thicker line, but generally speaking we need to be just a bit careful that we don't overpower the image by making the edge line too thick and too bright so it detracts from the image we're actually displaying. Now the main reason we consider putting a fine edge line around our images is really for the benefit of other people, perhaps not ourselves. What I mean by that is if I were to open this image up full screen, I'm just going to select it from the file list and touch the spacebar. If I create my image at 1920 and I'm going to view my slideshow on a screen which is 1920 1080 why would I need a thin edge line? Well, we could argue we probably wouldn't. What I've got on screen here is a simulation of how maybe somebody else would view our slideshow who may be viewing it on a different format screen, maybe even an iPad. And you can see the dark edges of this particular image are almost being lost into the background and the image could be a lot darker than this in some circumstances. So we have great difficulty seeing where the image ends and the screen around it begins. That's where a very fine line really creates that lovely frame and holds it all together. Now the spinning round of the screen allows me to demonstrate exactly what I mean. I've put a one pixel line around the outer edge of the image and doesn't that improve the presentation? And in fact the line is nowhere near white, it's actually quite a mid grey, but it's doing the job perfectly. Now generally speaking we probably know right from the start of a new project whether we're going to want to do this. So it may be a good idea to give it a great deal of thought before we actually start to program our slideshow. Because what we could do is to program a series of fine lines around our image and we can apply them to a slide style. So when we want to apply these lines it's very quick and easy to do. But it really needs to be done at the start of the process. And the reason we should do it at the start of the project is because slide styles also impact the slide duration. So if we'd already made these images synchronized to music and all these values were different, when we applied the slide style it could very well reset all of the slide durations back to 7 seconds. So it needs to be given some thought before we get started on the synchronization of a show. So let's set up one or two of these lines. I'm going to select this image and open it up into the objects and animation screen. I'm going to go to my animation tab first because this is purely for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to bring the size of my image down just a little bit. In normal circumstances of course I certainly wouldn't want to do that because I want my edge line to be around the edge of my image around here. But by just reducing the image zoom a little bit, when we apply an edge line it gives us the opportunity to view it nicely here. OK, let's select the image and we can apply the line. I'm going to go to my Properties tab. I'm going to tick the border. We can measure in pixels or percent. Pixels is my favourite. I'm going to choose just one pixel in white and when I click into the grey area to lose the bounding box we can see the line. The line looks a little bit fine here but that's because we're looking at the image at 50%. If I were to increase this to 100% and just scroll up to one of the corners, you can see that the line we've created actually looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do here is go back to my animation and reset my zoom. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want to make a slide style. So I don't want to make the slide style and include a zoom as well. The whole point is to put it around the outer edge of the image in a 169 aspect ratio slideshow. So let's come out of the objects and animation screen and 
Now we can hardly see the line at all, but we know it's there. So we need to create a slide style. So I'm going to go to my slide style tools and create a style. I'm going to create a little category for this. I'll just call it edge lines. And the first one of these lines is one pixel in white and create. Now we can just test this by applying it to these few images here. But I can reinforce what I was saying earlier too. Let's say we'd already done some work synchronizing this slideshow to music and we had all different values in here and it's not unreasonable for that to happen. If I then selected all of these images and applied my edge slide style, there it is, one pixel in white. If you look at the slide duration at the bottom right of each of these images as I double click this, you can see why we need to consider doing this at the start because although it's very quick and easy to add this to, in our case, four images or 44 images, what we don't want to do is to upset any synchronization. So we need to do it early on. Now, I don't think there's any doubt that we got the slide style right, but we do need to check to make sure. We already looked at this one, but we haven't checked the ones that we've applied the slide style to. Now, in this case, I'll just select the first one, go to the Objects and Animation screen, and I'll just drop the zoom down a little bit and click into the grey area and there you can see the fine lines been added. And if it's been added to this one then we know it's been added to all of them. And there you can see the line there. Coming back to the slide list here and the image we applied the one pixel line to, if we go back into the objects and animation screen I'm going to make another one at two pixels and I'm going to make a slide style of that too and if we do these all together then when we go to tools and create the style it while we've got the software open it remembers the category and it even remembers the name so it's quite convenient now for me to just adjust the name so they all going to look much the same but with one two and maybe three pixels in white now while we're in a fine edge line creating mood, why don't we make a three pixel one as well? Because I think they will cover all eventualities, one, two, and three pixels. So again, back into the objects and animation screen, we can go to our width and increase it to three and make our slide style. So slide style, tools, create the style. There it is, just change the two to three and we've got a nice little set of edge lines that we've created. And of course it wouldn't be a bad idea to make another three, one pixel, two pixels and three pixels, but use a mid gray. Let me demonstrate just one of those. I'm gonna select this image again and go back into the objects and animation screen. Click the color here, or let's go to one pixel again. Let's click the color and the sort of grey I'm talking about here is something way down here. In fact, when we see it against the white, we're likely to think, well, that's not going to have any impact at all. But in actual fact, it does. Let's click OK to that and apply it. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the animation screen. We'll drop the, not the pan. What am I going to the pan for? Let's drop the zoom down. And we'll push this up to 100%. Scroll up to the top right so we can see it, remove the bounding box and there we have a very delicate line, one pixel in mid grey and if we create one in two pixels and one in three we've got a nice set of lines that should meet most of our needs. Now let me select all of these, we'll just bring this section to a close. I'm going to go to my slide styles and you'll notice that I've got now a one pixel and a two pixel and a three pixel in white and a one two and three in mid gray. I'm just going to add the three pixel mid gray to those images and I've chosen all five and if we just 
stop that playing for a minute and we open this up into the objects and animation screen and I just drop the size down just a little bit there you can see what three pixels looks like and when we view that at 100% you can see it's got a little bit more body to it than the one I first introduced which is one pixel but you can see even at three pixels when it's mid grey it's pretty delicate now imagine you've forgotten all about the edge line and you've spent quite a considerable amount of time synchronizing your slideshow to music then you want to add a thin line well then unfortunately you've got to apply it one slide at a time so you need to open up the first slide in the objects and animation screen and you need to go to your properties and add the one pixel line in whatever color or tone you chose but then you can skip on the top right here to the next image and tick the border and hit the one there and go through the entire number of images in your slideshow but there is one other way if you use an image editor like Photoshop or Photoshop Elements here we are in Photoshop's Creative Cloud but in actual fact you can use any version of Photoshop for what I'm about to demonstrate here and any version of Photoshop Elements I'm going to make a new canvas at the size of the slideshow I'm making File, New there's one already there because I use this size quite often over on the right hand side here I'm going to choose black as my background color and I'm going to create it so that reflects the slideshow we're making what I'm going to do is to go to my layers and just create a new blank layer here I need to select the outer edge of that blank layer control A will do that you can find it in select all and there's your shortcut key what we're going to do on this line is to create our one pixel in white so if I go to edit stroke one pixel you can see I've oft often used gray here as well but in this instance I'm going to use white one pixel on the inside of this line and click OK control D will remove that selection now you can see the thin line around the outer edge I actually didn't need a black background I only put that there so you could see the thin line and I'm going to drag that in the bin because what we need to save is this and you can see that without the black background it's hard to see the thin line but we know it's there now the checkerboard effect here is telling me that everything on this particular new canvas is transparent apart from one pixel in white around the edge I need to save this to where I'm working in my slideshow but I need to save it as a PNG file and that will retain the transparent center so file save as I'm working in my various topics I think I was working in this folder so here I'm going to call this frame I generally always call it frame and right down the bottom almost PNG is what we need let's save that click OK now we can go back into pictures to Exe so in the file list above I need to locate my frame which is not easy to see for obvious reasons but there it is so I'm going to go to my first picture in my sequence now just imagine that all of this is a fully synchronized slideshow if I go to the objects and animation screen I can click into the gray area to lose any bounding boxes and I add an image and the image I'm going to add is my frame there it is and we can see it appear we can see it over here and if I click into the gray area we just about get a glimpse of it the quickest way to apply this to all of the other images in your sequence is to select the frame over on the right here and use shortcut keys of control C to copy that to the clipboard then you can move to the next image click the gray area control V next image 
click the grey area, control V. You can see you could skip through quite a number of images here very quickly. And already I've reached the end of the little sequence I've used as a demonstration here. Now using this image at the start, let's just take a look to make sure we're happy with what we've applied. Let me pick up my... I need to actually adjust both of these together, don't I? So I need to select both of the keyframes. Just drop that size down a little bit so you can see it. And there, even without looking at this at 100%, we can see that delicate line around the outer edge. And of course the great thing about this method is if you felt that line was a little bit too bold and you wanted to replace it with a one pixel in grey, then all you need to do is to create that in Photoshop and then overwrite the frame you applied here. And then even if you've got 60 images in a slideshow, your frame can be applied simply by copying and overwriting the previous frame you created. Pictures to Exe will use that new frame and apply it to all of the other images. Now if you think about that one pixel line that I applied here and the way that I applied it, you can see that quite a few other creative techniques open up using this particular technique because we could add borders and frames to our images much like we would do maybe with a physical print.